But thank you for having the opportunity to be here and present an archaeological story from Thuy, which deals with processes of change and transformations linked to Bronze Age population pressure and resource problems in Denmark. More precisely, in the region of Thuy, bordering the North Sea on the shoulder of Jutland. Especially during the Middle Bronze Age, Thuy was actively integrated with the outer world, being part of the Mauritius along the northern and eastern coasts of the North Sea. This sum distribution is a turning point of my paper, and in fact it links to some the paper yesterday about boom and bust cycles in the Nordic Bronx Age. But it is a kind of case story for the subregion of two, I'll say. This sun distribution is based on radiocarbon dates from 49 Bronx, late Neolithic and Bronx Age houses, computerized at the AMS uh, Center at Aarhus University by Jesper Olsen. When the random distribution is subtracted, a significant boom and bust figure is isolated, as you can see here. In my interpretation, it is an outcome of population pressure and subsequent decline in population size during the Middle and the Late Bronze Age. By using independent data from pollen investigations and grave finds, I will in the following argue for the validity of this interpretation and show how the many people made a dramatic impact on the vegetation which apparently led to an over exploitation and an ecological crisis during the late Bronze Age. To get an idea of the landscape I'm talking about, I'll just show you one picture here from today's undulating, cultivated, moronic landscape inland in two, and with the North Sea in the background. This regional pollen diagram is the best dated from two, and clearly shows the first very dramatic cut in the percentage of wooded areas, which happened during the single grave culture, about 1,000 years after the start of the Neolithic. A development further accelerated during the Middle Bronze Age, where this perfect fit with the sum distribution present before links an increase with the Bronze Age house building activity uh, and, um, and the development in the vegetation. When we take into account the effect of long distance transport on pollen, which may at least count for 20% of the free pollen, two was at the end of the Middle Bronze Age almost without any continuous high forest. Now, one other element must be brought into focus, the many burial mounds of two. To understand the distribution of the barrows, it is necessary first to look at the geology where well, the high moronic ground on this map is marked uh, with yellow and brown colors. Along the North Sea, the landscape consists of dunes deposited on raised seabed. Add then the mounds. Here you are, as recorded from two and the neighboring island moss in the national <coughs> database. Perhaps, perhaps the highest concentration of prehistoric barrows in all central and northern Europe. So the construction of the many barrows, thousands of acres of grass turf was used, which no doubt, at least for some time, reduced the productive potential of the soils substantially. Of course, it should be borne in mind that not all mounds are from the Middle Bronx Age, as a certain amount dates back to the Neolithic. This figure you see here, with two peaks of barrow building, deals with the general date, date of barrows in Denmark. But in two, however, the main part are actually <coughs> built during, or at least do contain, secondary phases from the Middle Bronze Age. 
Late Bronze Age burials are mainly from barrows as well, but mostly found as secondary urn graves in existing barrows. For many years, the number of burials from the Bronze Age of Chu at Moss has been known to show, to show a marked rise from Middle Bronze Age period 2 to 3. More recent results demonstrate an almost similar decline in numbers during the Late Bronze Age, the beginning of which is here marked with a fat red line. The important transformations in burial rites from the Middle to the Late Bronze Age are, first of all, a marked rise in the use of urn graves and the end of barrel building. Use of cremations, on the other hand, started some hundred years earlier than the beginning of the late Bronze Age. Now, look here. When we then insert the sum distribution from the houses, it is evident that there is a perfect fit between the rise and decline in number of burials and the boom and bust of the sum distribution. Admittedly, there are some source-critical considerations to be taken into account for the late Bronze Age. But as this fit is so convincing and is confirmed by the pollen data, a simple explanation is close line, that we are in fact dealing with fluctuations in numbers of people. Not to the extent that nobody was left at the end of the late Bronze Age, but relatively fewer than during the boom in the Middle Bronze Age. As for this period, the Middle Bronze Age, the development from period two to three is not only characterized by a growing number of burials, but also in a rising proportion of warrior burials resorts from period two, where one third of all burials had a sort, to period three, where almost every second was buried with a sort. There's no radical change in the proportion of male and female burials between period two and period three took place, we are no doubt dealing with an increase in population density followed by a growing warrior involvement. This fits perfectly Christian Christiansen's observations of an increased amount of resharpened swords from period two to period three. As an indication of a beginning crisis. Add then to this Klaus Ransbos' old statement that the amount of burials in northwestern Jutland in period pre by far exceeds the normal Danish ratio between soil quality and number of burials. In other words, we are dealing with an overpopulation. That the exploitation of the landscape was intensified during the Middle Bronze Age can also be seen in the building turfs from the burial mounds. In some cases, an increased amount of plantain pollen was observed from period two to period three, indicating a growing grazing pressure. Linked to this intensified use of the landscape was lack of proper wooden resources, which I will illustrate by a case from late period two at the site of Biara 6 from Northern Chu, situated on the raised Littorina seabed close to the North Sea, south of the Hanstown headland, where the two archaeological projects in the 90s excavated a 25 meter long house from the 14th century BC. Due to a high water table, the lower parts of many posts were preserved. For South Scandinavian archaeology, this was a special situation where it could be studied how many different tree species were used during construction of this house in two phases. In the eastern end of the house, willow was used for roof supporting posts. As willow is known to be soft, weak, and rots very easily, it is a clear indication of lack of proper building materials. Even driftwood was used, illustrated by two pieces of larch from the corner of the house. During the Bronze Age, the nearest areas with larch was in the Alps or in Siberia, and in Siberia. Therefore, our posts no doubt were gathered driftwood from the nearby North Sea 
most likely originating in Siberia. At least three of the roof supports could furthermore be shown to come from the same oak trunk, clothing into at least three pieces. Interestingly, radiocarbon dates of this trunk was more than 500 years older than the other dates of wood from structures in the house. Taken into consideration the restricted number of growth rings in the trunk, it is most likely that it was fossil wood found during peat cutting, which abundant macrobotanical data demonstrate took place already during the Middle Bronze Age, not only at coastal Biara, but also further inland. Even in cremations, peat was used for fuel. In fact, our dates from Psy of the use of peat for fuel in Denmark are the earliest evidence of this practice. And even in this large, well-built, cheerfully house from inland too, with ostentatious consumption of wood, peat for fuel was used the last time the central cooking pit in the western end of the house was in function. The wood used for the construction of the house could have been from the last remnants of high forest in central too, or was perhaps imported from the outside. Now, it is time for a broad view and to stress that our sum distribution has parallels and similar curves. We have heard about it yesterday and today as well. Uh, not only from the North European lowlands, but also from the British Isles. As you see here, despite a little chronological difference, this British sum distribution shows the same kind of boom and bust development as our curve from two. No doubt those events are related in some way, and they must reflect variations in living conditions and number of people, as also concluded in relation to the British material by Stevens and Follow. I'm convinced that the boom in two is real. Influx of new people, or perhaps triggered by changes in agricultural strategy. But more doubtful it is what happened during the bust in the late Bronze Age, but most likely it was a crisis as a result of over-exploitation with a subsequent fall in population figures. Perhaps even a breakdown of the political structure as proposed by Christian Krasjansen. What we observe in the pollen diagram during the late Bronze Age is a regeneration of some of the woodland, which indicates a change in land use, a decline in population, or, or both. In relation to settlement structure, evenly dispersed single farms continued to be the norm during the late Bronze Age and was not replaced until the village structure appeared after 500 BC in the early Iron Age. But this development was a much more general transformation covering larger geographic areas and not directly linked to the regional and environmental situation in two I have been talking about. In a newly published two-volume book about Bronze Age II, based on data from the two archaeological project and other excavations in the area, edited by Eriksen, Christiansen and myself in depth chapters can be found relating to the topics of this presentation and much more. Thank you.